Welcome to this episode, Agriculture and Agribusiness are interconnected and vital to the global food system. Agriculture, by some extension, encompasses the growing of crops, raising livestock, cultivating natural resources for food and other related products. On this topic, smallholder, farmer, and agribusiness opportunities, I have two gentlemen in the studios with me. I will welcome Mr. Daniel. Welcome to the show. Thank you. He's a regular, actually, so you might have already seen him on some of the episodes. And our new special guest for the week, Mr. Sello. You are yeah. welcome. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. I mean, you guys are farmers. I hope the frequent rain is not disrupting harvest and cultivating for you guys. Not really. Actually, it's helping me. Okay. <laughs> That's good news to, to yeah. know then. Now, we've already established agriculture by some definition out of the way, so I will start with you, Mr. Daniel. When we talk about smallholder or small-scale farmer, who are we referring to? Okay, so generally, when we are talking about a small-scale farmer, it's an individual or a household, a group of people involved in you know, farming activities on a very small piece of land. Okay. You know, when we are talking about small-scale farmer, a person who is farming, but their farming is not up to, you know, the biggest stage, just a small piece of land that he manages it. So that's a small farmer. Yeah, I think by some extent the word <laughs> precedes it. So what is your perception or what is your view about small-scale farming? Uh, from my point of view, someone who holds less than 100 hectares okay. is still a small farmer. Really? That's a huge <laughs> landscape, though. Yeah, it looks huge, though. But let's say, like, in USA, people hold till, like, 1,000, or even 10,000 hectares of farm. So, yeah, okay. when you hold less than 100, you're still a small farm, <laughs> like me. Oh, so you, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm still small. Yours, yours is also small scale? <laughs> yeah, yeah, small scale farming. Yeah. Okay. So imagine I have a, a size, just, I mean, the size of this studio. I'm, am I still part of you or there's another category for that one? <laughs> yeah, you know, talking about farming, you know, the whole thing is somehow tricky. Like, he gave an example of America, they are into big farming. Okay. But we, when we take our reality here, somebody with 100 acres is into business. Mm. But just beside your house, you have a garden. You are planting your some stuff for your personal use. Mm -hmm. uh, we can call you a small scale farmer. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Yeah. I, I hope you agree to what he's saying. Okay, I, I will say you are. You've been the category of extra small. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we we know in every activity there are pros and cons, there are challenges and all that. So starting first of all with a small scale farmer. I mean, you guys are farmers yourself, so I, I would like to start with you. What are some of the challenges you face as a small scale farmer? Okay, I think the first challenge is the length okay. itself. So it's like a financial challenge, because okay. when you talk to a lot of people, they will say, I don't have money to get a land, or I don't have the land yet, but I would like to go into farming. Okay. But once you get the land, uh, the agriculture here is not that developed. We we have lack of fertilizer. Okay. Uh, we're still using traditional equipment like hoe instead of tractor. Okay. So when a big agriculture is using tractor to sow like one hectare in 15 minutes with your hoe, you might be sowing in days. Uh, yeah, in <laughs> yeah, in weeks. In weeks in <laughs> exactly. So one of our biggest challenge is that uh, we don't have technical support. Okay. Yeah. So personally, to you, I mean, as a farmer, currently, what are these like two examples of the challenges you face personally as a farmer? Yes. Uh, the equipment, like you is using a hoe, okay. it takes way more time. To do that is really hard. And another challenge is the irrigation system. Okay. okay. Since, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it brings us back to the, I mean, the traditional way. Maybe you have to use the French people call it the arrosoir, the watering cans. Exactly. Which is take longer time exactly. to, to do. So, Mr. Daniel. Yeah, my biggest challenge, and I think is the challenge of all the, you know, farmers across, you know, our country is the limited access to market, and okay. it is on different stages. It's either you get the product, you do not find the buyer. Okay. Or the buyer, the offer is there and you know, the demand you cannot meet with it. Okay, okay. You know, you are a small scale farmer, a certain period will come. Like I'll give my personal example, when we are doing the poultry farming, okay. there were moments you have fowls mm -hmm. and you are looking for markets, okay. you will not get the market. And there are times also the market will come, but you cannot supply. supply them. 
So this is a biggest challenge me I have been facing for a while now. So what about the starting capital? I mean, you spoke earlier something a bit similar. Yeah. Imagine you want to start a farm as a small-scale farmer. Yeah. How to get a capital? Isn't that one of the difficulties as well? Yes, I definitely agree. <laughs> Unless you have a job. Uh, okay. Yeah, a side job like ah. me. I do have a job, so. Okay, okay. So you are even more than an agri Oh, you said an agri so an yeah. agricultural and then an entrepreneur. Exactly. You, know, you are a CEO of Pencil, right. which I'm already at work, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I know you have something on your side. You know, this question is very tricky because okay. getting money before going to the field, I don't think it is an issue. Okay. Because when we were about to start, we get the money. But when you start producing the stuff, the market, because right now, if you have a project, you know you are going to grow maize or stuffs, and you, you have the market, you can go for a loan. Okay. okay. You can go for a loan, and one, you supply your document, then they find out everything is in order, mm -hmm. that you can meet with the payment at the end. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, uncertainties on the field, you go to the bank right now, they check your, product, your, your document, and they see, ah, there's no certainty that you can meet. The requirement uh, to pay back. Yeah, okay. due to, you know, we have weather issues too. So maybe you, you plant your maize and the rain will not fall. Oh. So if the rain doesn't fall <laughs> and you do not harvest, how are you going to pay the bank? So <laughs> going for the money is an issue. Yeah, you get me? So the market is my biggest challenge because once there's the, you have the market and you, this weather conditions, you are able to cater with it, you, know, you are good to go. Okay, let, let's come to a more recent practical issue. Um, I mean, the war in Ukraine, we've had a lot of politicians talk about food prices going high, inflation and all that. So the volatility, the, the unset, not even uncertainty, because sometimes you can't be certain of the price, but you go there, it's different. So the volatility of the prices, does it also affect the a small scale farm? I mean, uh, deeply, because Imagine, like you said, you as somebody has 1,000 acres. Yeah. Maybe the plantation, the crops that are mm -hmm. being raised, they are not just one kind. Yeah. So they can probably find a balance. Maybe the person is also raising mm -hmm. fowls or whatever, so they can find a balance. But for a small-scale farmer who perhaps doesn't have a larger land site but is cultivating, when you yeah. go to them, you spoke about markets. Imagine you have the market and you can meet the demand, mm -hmm. but the prices are not stable. How do you deal with that? You no, know, the pricing thing goes with their production. Because first of all, there are sometimes somebody will tell you people are buying tomatoes. So the year many people planted tomatoes. Okay. And tomatoes is outside there and everybody is doing mm -hmm. tomatoes. So you know the price will come down. Yeah, okay. So as far as the price comes down, people will not sell the the producer will not sell. Yeah. So the coming year you will say no, when I produce the last year it didn't work. It didn't so work. Well. So the coming year maybe you will not produce. Okay. And you know the demand is out there. And okay. you, right now, people are looking for it, so it may make the price, you know, increase. Okay. So, so any, any personal experience from yourself I mean, in terms of the price? When it comes to the price, yeah, I went through that issue last year because mm -hmm. exactly I've tried tomato, <laughs> but <laughs> but me, I always use natural stuff. I don't use any any chemical okay. to preserve people's health. But here in in Togo or. Uh, in I Africa, mean, you can put it in the context, yeah, yeah, in Togo, mm -hmm. people don't value natural stuff. Okay, they don't like the bio. like, yeah, they don't like the bio. From them, it's the same thing. Mm. But to do bio, you you spend more money, is harder. So normally time. the price should be higher. Exactly. But when you go to the market, they will say we don't care if it's bio or not. We get at the same <laughs> price. I don't know if it's a that is agreeing or you know, it's okay. not about about the people not liking. Bill. It, it is about the money, you know, how much. Uh, okay. I think it's economic. Yeah, money. yeah. But, but um, I think if, you know, let's, let's be outright here. Mm. If I'm producing tomatoes, let's say, on a large quantity and I'm using natural fertilizers, it's going to take probably longer, a lot of man work, yes. a lot of sacrifice, if I can put exactly. it. Exactly. So you don't expect me to sell it at the same price somebody who's using GMOs or. I mean, chemical fertilizers to sell it. So we have to understand that there's a difference between the product and the prices go along. Yeah, then exactly. it will be a, a target issue. Okay. When you produce, you are supposed to get the main target for your product. Okay. Because outside there, everybody is looking for the cheap thing to buy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Due to <laughs> yeah, yeah, your economical you know, situation, mm. how much you earn, is according to that you're going to buy. We have that experience when we are producing the fowls, we went to we went to one restaurant and they were telling us the imported chicken are cheaper. Uh, they are cheaper. 
but the one we were producing, you know, like they are selling 2,000 francs, mm -hmm. the imported one, we are at selling our own for 3,500. Mm -hmm. For their business in the fast food, it's not helpful. Mm -hmm. So they cannot come for your product. So it's either you choose a target, mm -hmm. people who understand, you know, what you your product is about, you know, okay. and things involved for you. Which to equally involves a lot yeah. of education for exactly. you. Exactly. We are getting that back is. to the market <laughs> <That> <laughs> problem again. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so by, by some definition, I'm just going to read quickly the definition of agribusiness uh, agri I have here. Yeah. Okay. I have that it refers to the entire supply chain associated with agriculture. So talking about production, processing, the marketing, the distribution, the retailing of agricultural products and related services. Yeah. That's what I have by definition. I don't know if it's accurate or not, but so what, what is the importance of agribusiness? I'm okay. going to start with you again. Okay, talking about agribusiness, agri business, you know, back in the days, it was agriculture. Mm -hmm. You produce and, you know, you try to find somebody to get your product. But with agribusiness, it's not about the production alone, mm -hmm. the processing, mm -hmm. the marketing, the distribution, and even the policy in the country when yeah. it comes to sale, food security issues. You know, mm -hmm. and you know, technologies, education, you know, this education thing and modernization mm -hmm. about farming things. So it's not one aspect producing for production sake, but the consumption, you know, availability, affordability, all those stuff are involved when, when it comes to agribusiness, you know. Okay. So, Mr. Sello, agribusiness. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, before then, uh, what kind of crops do you grow in your farm? We grow cassava last year but actually we are into we are more into poultry farming okay but last year we started with cassava okay so what, what crops do you grow so plantain okay yeah plantain. Okay. okay so back to the the importance of the agribusiness okay uh you already gave the definition and i totally agree with that definition okay. and I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like you say agri uh, agribusiness is way more than agriculture and the importance like I will get back. I will come back to the Togo again. Mm -hmm. Just with agriculture, agriculture contribute to like forty percent of the domestic gross product of Togo. Mm -hmm. But agribusiness is way more than that. The, uh, the processing, like you say, so it creates way more jobs, employment. It increases employment, mm -hmm. and actually, it brings way more money. A, into the people country. People have to eat every day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sorry, people sorry, have sorry. To, we, to have to eat every day. Every day. You can wake up and not buy the new iPhone, yeah, exactly. but you have to eat. Yeah, exactly. And I would like to give like one example. Okay. Like uh, with plantain, okay. when you just sell the the crops, okay. like let's suppose I have you have one hectare of plantain. When you just sell the, the crops, you can make like up to let's say five six million okay. of CFR. Okay. When when you go to the processing. I don't know if you've heard about it, but now you can use the trunk of plantain to make extract f fiber out of it and okay. to make uh, paper, to make bags. Yeah, yeah, I've heard for, I think, plantain, the trunks. Actually. Exactly. Yeah, so I know a company that does that in Uganda, okay. and the lady is making millions of dollars. Yeah. It's not like millions of CFR. <laughs> so you can see the difference. <laughs> okay. So I think we, we could all agree that agribusiness is essential because in my earlier introduction, I spoke about how they are interconnected and vital to global food system. Viewers, you can join us every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. You can catch a repeat on Sunday, same time. YouTube, the Key Point playlist, and as well on Facebook. We'll be going for a quick break. When we come back, we are still live on the Key Point. Welcome back. I have in the studios Mr. Selom Olympio and Mr. Daniel Agbebleu. We were talking about smallholder farmer and agribusiness opportunities. I hope you are equally learning at home as I am also learning here in the studios. We spoke about some of the challenges faced by smallholder farmers, talk about agribusiness and all that. So we are going to delve much now into the key components when we say agribusiness. What, if you can cite one or two, three things, what and what has to be present? So we can say that particular person is practicing agribusiness. So I, I will start with Mr. Selo. Yes. What are some of the components of agribusiness? Mm, I would say uh, one of the components is agriculture itself. Okay. 
and going over that, the processing. Okay. Yeah, that's what I can say. So, Mr. Okay. Daniel, you know, to go up on what he just said, when you, it, when you go to the pro processing, we get two types of processing. Okay. Like when you take wheat and you get flour from, okay. from it, okay. you know, it's yeah. one processing. And we have the conserving aspect also, like you smoke fish to preserve it. Okay. So through, through that you are processing it too. Okay. But you, you, you cannot talk about these stuffs without talking about, you know, the distribution aspect also. You know, when it comes to distribution, transport, and you know, all staffs, they are included into the agribusiness component. Okay. You, you can talk about input, and mm -hmm. when you talk about input, the fertilizers and goods that you will need. Even seed today, with agribusiness, it's not every seed that is supposed to be sold. Really? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seeds <laughs> yes. are selected for business purposes, like my big boss here who's into plantain. He cannot just go to any farm and get plantain and plant. Okay. You are exactly. in for business. So you mean business. Mm -hmm. You need result. It's not that you are trying. Mm -hmm. And also you need, you know, to be assured. Because, you know, when I will give example of the poultry farm once more again. Mm -hmm. There are period you can get into bird flu. Okay. And when bird flu happens, it's unpredictable. Yeah. You can lose your production. So if you are not insured or you don't have assurance mm -hmm. about what you are doing. When something happens to you, you are off business. And you know, mm -hmm. and agribusiness also comes with one of the biggest components is also the policy, what the country you are in is doing. And le le let me see, we have organizations here in Togo and SAT who help you know, producers to sell their product. Mm -hmm. But I know, I know there's more to, to come because when there are institutes like when you produce your plantain and you are not able to sell as a producer, if the government can come in and get your product, if you don't get profit, at least the money you invested into you the farm get sector, to do, you get it back. Yeah. So these are the components when, which is supposed to be there when we, we, we want to talk about agribusiness. Okay. That's a, yeah. <laughs> it's very insightful because the only thing I knew was that there are certain seeds or certain uh, food supplement, if I can use the word, you can't take outside a particular country. I didn't get the understanding you can't just go and pick a exactly. particular crop or whatever and then just come and start sowing. I, I would <laughs> like to yeah. jump on that. Okay, okay. We have imp uh, improved seeds. Okay. So the, the crops from those seeds are better than the regular one. Okay. And I've tried that. Like a, an improved uh, plantain can give you a bigger, a bigger plantain, a bigger fruit okay. than the regular one. Okay. And it's not easy to find here. Uh, a month ago, I've tried to, I've tried to culture paper, okay. and when I went to the, to the shop, they say it's an improved seed, and it was way more expensive. expensive. I bought it, and not even one seed actually grew. <laughs> I mean, he, he spoke <laughs> about uh, um, plant circumstances. Yeah. I think, <laughs> sorry for that misfortune. Yeah. And to clarify one thing, you know, when you are into agribusiness, it's not a small-scale farmer issue. We are moving from small-scale farming into business. Mm -hmm. So exactly. when there is a demand, there are standards. Like when you want to grow maize, it's not you going to the market buying maize and so. I mean, so there is a category kind of maize people need. Yes. Okay. Uh, so if you produce the wrong maize, you have the maize, but you will not get the buyer. <laughs> uh, so when I say you don't, you do not go to the market and pick. Okay. The crop and come and so mm. that's what I mean. Okay. I mean, you guys are more into the system, so you <laughs> you have better experience and explanations to give us. Now, talking about all the the components by definitions and all that, what are some of the opportunities for small scale farm when we talk about agri business? What are some of the opportunities that can benefit them, for example, mm. in agri business? I, I will start okay, with you. so when we talk about opportunities in agri business, you know, today agriculture is gaining more the terrain. And the biggest, you know, opportunity I have discovered in you know, agri agriculture right now is agro-tourism. Okay. So in agro-tourism, I had that experience in Ghana. Okay. They are into fruit production and okay. processing. So they grow the fruit, they process it, they transform it into juice, mm -hmm. and they export it. So they have this big firm where people can go for, you know, Visitors come in, okay. they visit, they pay, mm. they see how the process is done. Wow. And even people <laughs> for recreation staffs, when people want to you know, go for tour, tourism 
and no side singing. They come to the uh, company, they look from the farm to the processing, uh, the processing staff, okay. and you know, it makes money. And another opportunity I can speak about is uh, uh, vertical farming. And today, vertical farming is winning, you know, the terrain also, because we do not have more space. My brother talked about land, mm -hmm. but with vertical land, uh, vertical farming, farming, you don't need soil by force, mm -hmm. you don't need more water to talk about irrigation staffs. Yeah. When you have the money and the construction is done for you, mm -hmm. you are good to go. But when you say vertical, I mean, the word is a means standing straight, so is that like the, the, yeah. the, the farming is done straight to the air? Or how it's a construction, it? you know, it's a construction, so it's like there are levels. You okay. have your first stage, you grow the crops, second stage, you grow the crops, third stage, you grow the crops. So instead of you having a wide right. space, yeah, right. you mm -hmm. can grow, 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 you grow higher and higher. Okay. And also we have floriculture. Okay. Actually, you know, when we talk about floriculture, people's attention don't go to that area. Mm -hmm. Today, you can easily sell flower. So people, you can see people by the roadside with the pure touch mm -hmm. sun inside, you grow flower, oh, and you okay, sell. Okay, okay, okay. It is an opportunity. <laughs> You know, okay. it is the biggest opportunity right now. You don't need to have more money. You, all you need to g get the seed, you get your pure water sachets, you grow the flower. Somebody building the house can just come and buy, and go and grow in their, in their mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. Green grass also. Well, I mean, sometimes we realize people are cutting others' people off secretly <laughs> in the night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because right now it is a it is a, an opportunity to people are used to gardening, you know, when you build your house, you need to have a small so green small. space. So that's also is for a culture and uh, I think no, you go it, <laughs> it's very It's very insightful. It's very, well, any other submissions on opportunities for agribusiness? business? Yes, I think, yeah. Actually, right now we have like so many opportunities. Um, let's say the last time they, they were war in Ukraine. Okay. We didn't have enough wheat. Okay. Someone can actually Take the opportunity. Take the opportunity. Seize the occasion. And <laughs> I, I think that should make us African think. Okay. Like there is now normal that we have 60% of the lands, cultivable lands in the world, and we will be starving because two countries at the end of the world <laughs> are fighting. Uh, we have a, I think we have a, a fish issue too. Yeah. Okay. Actually in Togo, yeah. Someone can start raising fish okay. in his house mm -hmm. and you can sell easily but you, you spoke earlier about standards or yeah. maybe the policy of a particular government or country is it is it that easy or no I'm, let me use the word easy but would it be that much allowed for you to be doing some sort of crop i mean if you want to grow maize in the house maybe just one or two standing up i think some people also do plantain yeah. it takes a longer number of years plant coconut and the rest of it uh, with some specific kinds, you spoke about improved seeds. Is this something you have to just, would you be able to do it at home? Would, it, would it be, the soil be fertile? Because in my understanding, I believe you should be able to understand the kind of soil you have to know the kind of crop you grow. I don't, I don't know if I'm making yeah, it. Is, okay, is, yeah. This is levels in agriculture, but <laughs> what we are practicing in Africa is, you know, the traditional ones. Okay. What we know our forefathers have been doing. So it's a transfer of knowledge. Yeah, it's a continuation of what is we, that was done before. Yeah, we process from our forefathers. So what okay. I would say is that right now there's no policy. When we want to go into fishing right now, they know the ordinary fish you would like to produce mm -hmm. is the one beside yeah, you. Okay. You will not go outside. So, you know, the government checking whether it is the good stuff you are producing, there's no, you know, need like that there. You can just go what people are doing. You also practice to, from you practice them. it. You know, but when you want to go to the high level, like agribusiness, for business sake, then you need to know because people who come and buy and they will test your product. Exactly. If you do not have the good product, you are losing. Okay. You are losing. But when you see someone growing cassava, for instance, you can see the farmer, oh, I need some, you know, drunk some of your cassava of, yeah. so that I can grow in my farm. And, you know, you are into farming. See, now, we know we are in a dispensation where technology is important. So you spoke earlier about if you would have to use uh, bio or 
uh, natural fertilizer, you would, you would have to input, do a more investment into the production. So what role would technology play or innovation play? I think with innovation, we are talking about new ways of doing things, new ways yes. of farming, new ways of rearing animals and, and, and the rest. So what role does technology or innovation play in, in farming for you? You know, the, the role of technology is really big, like it's really big when it comes to farming. Um, you gain in time because, like I said, with a hoe uh, to sow one hectare, it might take one month. Okay. But someone who has a tractor can do it in 15 minutes. You can <laughs> see the difference. Um, you gain in harvest. The harvest is not the same when you have technology on your side. Uh, two years ago, I've tried uh, Papa, okay. and I didn't have the irrigation system. Okay. And I've tried 2,000 plant of uh, Papa, okay. like thousands of them died because I didn't have the ir yeah, irrigation yeah, system. Who, who gets the water? <laughs> exactly. So I had to put up money to put up money and then restart. Okay. Okay. But when we come, to, uh, when you talk about irrigation system, the Best irrigation system right now, I think, is the dripping one. Yeah. Exactly, which cost uh, very okay. much. Hmm. Come to our level. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That, what, I usually see people have tubes and then the water sprinkles. That's what I knew was probably the best. So which uh, one is the dripping one? The dripping one is um, there are holes, small holes Oosh. that actually drip water little just under the, tree. under the tree. So you don't waste water. Okay. And yeah, you don't waste water at all. It's really economical, and you can actually put it in a way that it Even actually gives the exact, exact amount, amount of water yeah. your yeah. exactly your tree need to grow. Wow! In, in but it's really expensive, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really truly expensive. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's very insightful. And it's serious what he's talking about. Even you know, it saves time. Like this uh, technology, you can even uh, put fertilizer through the water system. Okay. So you know, use fertilizer aside and use water aside. Mm -hmm. But when you know it comes to technology, it is the modify, you know, genetically modify, you know, crops that I would like to talk about. They are really helping. You know, we get, let me start with the poultry farm because that was my sector. Mm -hmm. Our home base hens that we used to raise, they can take six months, but they are just like it. <laughs> you, you cannot sell them. Yeah. One year, they are just small. But with the you know modifying ones, three months you have the chicken. But you know, would, I'm I'm a bit worried about the GMOs because mm -hmm. the thing is that we don't know exactly the kind of component or constituent of some of the because with the GMOs, let's yes. talk about poultry. You would have to feed them with something. Yeah, there's no uh, certainty or guarantee that what you are feeding them is actually natural. So that is where me my concern is because okay. the moment we are talking about technology, we have pros and cons. Yes. There are countries creating artificial food in the name of technology. Okay. But, yeah. So we, 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 but I don't know, know. I'm very concerned you know, about the GMOs. It is GMOs. People think GMOs are bad things, but it is miseducation okay. because people do not wake up one day and bring something on market. Sure, sure. They study the human body okay. and, you know, what goes into their body and the crops, what they need to grow faster okay. before they put in place. Let me give you a common example. It's like one using horse to run errands. Mm -hmm. Today you have the car, but do not forget with the car, you have accident. But if you know how to drive properly, you will not have accident I mean. and you will save time, you will reach your ends. <laughs> I am so still you, not convinced. So <laughs> with, the GMOs, with the GMOs, what I'm trying to say is that the mm -hmm. GMOs, do they are not 100% natural, but they are not harmful. Okay. okay. They are not harmful to the human body because mm -hmm. everything we have been eating, you know, let, 20 years, 20 years now, they are all GMOs. But maybe do, they do not tell you the, those times. I mean, the rice, perfume rice we are eating, <laughs> yeah. they are GMOs, but we do not know. You know, the plantain, you know, the processed food, most of the processed food we use, mangoes that they used to do juice, the fantastic mm -hmm. things you people, we drink every day. So the byproduct of some of those things are already GMOs. Everything we use today, they are GMOs. Even someone will tell you right now they are doing biological farming, but GMOs are part of it. Well, well I, I, I would <laughs> agree to some extent. <laughs> because let, 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 let me explain to you. You are into organic farming right now, yes. but the, the grain, 
you are going to it's sow. Improved seed. It is improved it's seed. It's improved seeds, <laughs> exactly. For the grain not to stay in the soil for a very long, long time, time before the germination stuff happening. So they work on it. It's not that they give bad things. They work and they speed up, you know, the growing process I mean, of it. I would agree that yeah. there could be some good components of yeah. GMOs yeah. and there could be some aspects that we are not aware of, you know. Exactly. Because somebody who has put too much money into a research yeah. to improve a seed yeah. may not tell you all the other negative aspects of it. Yeah. But I do agree that yeah. no matter what it is, we have the good and the bad. And we may already consume some that already GMOs. We don't even know. We don't even know, yeah. So and, now, and let's... the dangerous part is okay. we cannot do without GMOs because if you want to grow the natural way, people will go hungry. I mean, I think just, we are overpopulated, actually. We are so overpopulated. We can't really meet. Just imagine you grow, you grow maize and the maize will take one year. Mm. You get me? But with this year, most four months, five months, six months, your maize are ready. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get me? So, GMOs are saving lives. Yeah. Just that you need to know the kind of stuff you'll be eating. There are some GMOs wh which are not good because people do not use them, you know, they are not uh, vected. You know, people are not vected before they do some things. Like someone will make an invasion in Ghana right now without vecting it, mm -hmm. the product, but tell you it is working. It is very good. You come and plant and you eat. It will give you cancer, give you something. Okay. But the ones that are vected, you no, know, they are the ones on the market. Like okay. when you want to go into the... Yeah, show, I, I, I'm you. very still not convinced that I agree <laughs> to what you said. So any, anything you want to add before we move to the last question? Uh, when it comes to technology, yes. uh, yeah. Uh, one thing is that even the processing, we need technology to actually process yeah. uh, our products. Like right now, my plan is to to process the trunk of the plantain. Yeah, and other by -products. Exactly. So. And I need technology for that. Okay. And that's what I'm looking for right, okay. right now. We, we hope you find the means to get that. So the next time we come on the show, you show us exactly example. We probably go and do a tour. That's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so lastly, you guys are young people as well. And uh, how do we encourage young people to get into agriculture? Okay. And I will take that and then your last submission as well. Okay. So, you know, agriculture in this part of our world is very difficult because, you know, first getting the land, it's not easy. And if you have the land to even the financial support, it's not there. Mm -hmm. So if we want to encourage the youth into the farming sector, we, we need to make the farming interesting mm -hmm. by making the farming, you know, means easy, not holding holes, you know, cutlass and, you know, pushing trucks on farm. Try to innovate small the farming and also teach people about modern farming. Because nowadays, people do not wait for the rain before farming. So if you are not educated, to, you cannot go with the modern ways. So the youth need to be educated, support financially, and you know, we are good to go. Okay, Mr. Selam, we are aspiring to get new technology. So in <laughs> some way, how, how, how would you convince the youth to, to get into agriculture? He talked about education. I think it's really important to do that an education campaign and an awareness campaign because our youth today, they are expecting to, they are not patient. Okay. They are expecting to gain money right, right now. Yeah. But agriculture, agriculture need patience. When you start today, you cannot harvest, it harvest today. today. Yeah. You have to wait. That's the first thing. We need to really do a campaign about that. They don't know how much they can actually make out of agriculture either. When I say one hectare of plantain can give you uh, maybe up to seven million, they don't know that. Mm. I mean, sometimes they might think you are probably overpricing. Exactly. <laughs> they might think I'm, I'm lying, yeah. but they don't know that. But when you make seven million, you are making more money than someone who will work at the bank and make even 500,000 a month. They don't know that. And another thing is we have to actually try to make that sector a little bit easier by technology. Because okay. when you ask someone who is born in Lomé to take a hoe uh -huh. and then start <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> sewing for hours, they'll be like, no, 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 I can't do that. 
So thank you guys very much for, for honoring us on the show today. We've spent far much time, so we'll have to wrap up today. <laughs> so I had Mr. Selom Olympio with me today, and I have Mr. Daniel Agbebleu today. So understanding the relationship between agriculture and agribusiness is important. We have to understand that there's needs of patients, there's a need of a capital, there's a need of technology, government policies, and policies. financial support to yes. encourage the youth such as myself who might be entering very <laughs> soon into the agricultural field. So thank you viewers for staying tuned with us. Mr. Akleso is the director for the program today. Uh, Mr. Stefan is a floor studio manager for today and I am your host, Jerry Etonam Atiobe. Is by. See you next week. <laughs>